Are you looking to create a risk register in Asana? Well, if that's the case, then you've come to the right place because today I'm gonna to be walking you through exactly what you need to do. I'm gonna be providing you with a template and some recommendations in, in what you want to include. And I will be giving you some tips and tricks along the way. Now, as you can see here, I've signed it up for a trial to, to show you this demo. I do need to protect my organization's data. But do bear in mind that everything that I show you here, you can apply in your own account. I have access to all of the functionality that I'd recommend using. Uh, so yeah, just bear that in mind as I go through this. So what we're gonna do to start off this risk register is we're going to create a project. So there is no means of creating um, a risk register via another template. This is almost how Asana works. So what we need to do here is create a blank project uh, from scratch. Now. You, we could technically build this in Excel and then import it in, but I feel like with the functionality of Asana, you're not really saving much time here. Um, it just tends to be better just to build it out in uh, Asana from scratch. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna click on blank project. And what we want to do here for the project name is we're just gonna enter um, uh, essentially what we're looking to build. So you could do something just like risk register, um, but I'm gonna do um, risk register for um, program a. Now, of course, this depends on your organization and it also depends on the kind of how many risks you're looking to, to collate. This could be for a particular department, as an example, or it could be for a program like I'm showing you here, or it could just be on the project level. So, so that, that's something that you need to consider. You know, what kind of risks do you want to capture? Um, and uh, uh, it will also impact, you know, how many risk registers you want to pull together. But this is just a recommendation. Of course, you might want to change this to, to suit your own organization's uh, needs. Uh, I'm gonna keep the default view as list. Um, we will be able to see the risk register in the board view, um, but I don't recommend building it from that. And it kind of works best from the list view to begin with. And then we can always kind of go into the board afterwards. So once we've done that, we're literally just pressing continue and we just want to start adding tasks. And as you will see, it's just created the base template. Now, one thing I would like to mention from the outset is that the task name, this field cannot be deleted and it, can't, it cannot really be changed. Um, so I can't actually change the name of this column. So do bear that in mind as I go through. In an ideal world, we would be able to do those things, but it's not possible. So I just wanted to mention that in terms of the functionality of the tool, uh, that's why I'm gonna be leaving this here. But we will have to use it and we will use it to our own advantage. And so what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be reimagining what this says and it's almost gonna be the uh, risk name. So if you could imagine, this is essentially where you provide a high level overview of what the risk is. So in this example, and for this particular demo, the risk is going to be a system upgrade which is due to take place in a week's time. So I'm just gonna put system upgrade in here. And from here, we're essentially gonna build out the template. And these are my recommended columns that I suggest you use. Um, they're kind of universally accepted. They, they're, they're common in different project management methodologies, and they are readily uh, un uh, understood by many different risk managers. So do bear that in mind. Uh, and before I start building these columns, one other thing I'd like to mention is I'm not gonna add any sections here, um, but you could do if you wanted to split up your risks from, let's say, um, potential risks, uh, completed risks, or risks that there's been a mediation plan kind of set up for. Um, you know, you could do that and you could kind of drag your risks around depending on how you're kind of classifying your different risks. So do bear that in mind. As I say, I'm not going to do that here today, but this is essentially how you do it. You just add a section, you click this button, you'd name it, and then you can start dragging risks around. So this is our first column, and I'm dragging this as far left as it goes. Uh, but from here, we are essentially going to, I'm actually going to remove the assignee and due date because I don't particularly like how they're named and um, we can't change them by default. So what we're gonna need to do here is we need to click the customize button and we're gonna scroll down here and we are going to untoggle these here. And essentially what it's doing is it's removing those custom fields for us. So if I click off here, now they've removed. So the first column I'd suggest you adding is a risk ID. Now you can do this in a variety of ways. You can use a text uh, field type, but I'm gonna suggest a number. And the reason for it is that we are going to essentially be benefiting from the sum 
um, functionality, which basically gives us a high level overview of, or, or a quick way of counting how many risks we have in this register without doing so manually. And risk ID. And the purpose behind a risk ID is that it just gives every risk its own unique identifier. So that when you refer to them, um, yeah, when you refer to, to the risks or you need to, to talk to potential stakeholders with them, then you can literally give them the risk ID and they know exactly which one you're referring to. Now, of course, for the bigger risks, um, or, or sorry, I should, I, should, I should say on projects where there's just, you know, very few risks, this may not be important, but the more risks you, you document and the kind of closer aligned they are, the easier this or, or the more important the risk ID will be as an example. Now, what we need to do here is I'm going to change this to count. We don't want sum because we, if this is obviously uh, risk ID two, we don't want that to say three, we want that to say two. So we're going to want to put that at count. So now we have risk ID. What shall we put next? Now, what I'm going to suggest is we're going to put in a risk description uh, field. So click we're going to click text for the fill type and here is going to be basically somewhere for the project manager such as yourself or any other stakeholder contributing to this risk register uh, this is going to be somewhere for them to basically provide a high level overview of what the risk is all about so it's really is expanding on the risk name so let's say in our example um, there is a risk of oh sorry risk of platform I can't spell on this one, on this particular laptop, sorry. Risk of platform downtime as system upgrades. And we're gonna put a date on as well, because the more detail you can give, the better. I just can't spell, unfortunately, on, let's just say the 25th of November. And I'll put the year in as well, just for reference. So we're putting that risk description in. So anyone who's looking at this risk can kind of hover over this and just see exactly what it's all about. Now, the next thing we're gonna put is the impact level. So if this risk were to occur, what is gonna be the impact of, of it, essentially? And we're gonna change this to a single select and we are gonna be calling this, obviously, as I said, impact level. Now, imagine impact in, as in if the risk were to occur, it's how, you know, how much of an impact the organization is going to have. Five being massive impact, one being, you know, a, a noticeable risk, but maybe doesn't uh, affect your day-to-day -day operations. Now, one to five is, again, a scale that's often used in project management um, methodology and is commonly accepted. Um, and there's a benefit of using, using one to five, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, so, yeah, I would suggest going from one to five with five being kind of severe and one being, you know, not so much. What we're going to do here is we're going to add the different options. So we've already got we've we've got option one, option two, but we are literally just going to put remove those and put just one, two, uh, three, four, five. And the particular coding here, this kind of works. We'd probably want this one to be a yellow. We're just going to uh, this is kind of uh, yeah, that will work. We want five to be red. If you see what I mean, I'm just trying to to get to actually this one's probably we just want some kind of scale here that kind of reflects. Yeah, that works. That reflects the severity, essentially. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to press create field. So now we've got an impact level. So let's just say, you know, if this in terms of the system upgrade, you know, if there is downtime, that's that's going to be big. You know, that's going to cause a lot of issues. Our project managers aren't going to be able to be able to work in their system. So the impact level is five, as an example. Now we're going to do the probability level. So, you know, how what's the chances of this actually uh, happening? Well, now um, we essentially need to create another one to five scale. Uh, so what we're going to do is essentially build this out again. So I'm going to go single select and it's the probability level. And again, we need these five options. Oh, sorry, not five options. One to five, the one to five scale, three, four, and five. And unfortunately, we've just got to quickly go through this, this again. Hopefully it won't take me as long this time because I kind of remember what we did. Uh, we'll go there and then we'll put that as red. And again, this is actually quite likely. I mean, the, the system upgrade, it's a, it's a big bit of work and we're gonna say this is quite likely. So we're gonna go four. So this is actually quite a big risk in terms of this, pro this particular, or well, it's for a program. But um, yeah, this is a big big risk to the program. Um, now we're gonna put um, the priority level. So imagine this as, you know, you only have so many resources, how do you prioritize your risks? How do you know which ones to focus on? Now, a good way of doing this um, priority level. 
I'm going to call this priority level score. Now, a good way of doing this is literally doing a, 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 a calculation um, of, of impact by probability. So if you can imagine these two fields, we're literally timesing them together. So this is going to be a, um, a number. No, we won't actually, sorry, I'll put this as a text, but this is a text and we're going to create field. So priority level. So here we literally, unfortunately we can't add a formula in here, but if you imagine this as a the multiplication of the impact level by the probability level, so in this example that's obviously going to be 20, but if we, if we obviously have this in mind, um, then you know, we can start to see and even sort on what's the bit, what's, what risks um, warrant a, a higher kind of um, priority. And in this case, this would be pretty high. As you can see, 5 by 4, 20 out of a maximum of 25, 25 being the utmost priority, 0 or 1 uh, being, you know, relatively little priority, this would be something we would really need to think about and, and, and monitor uh, and perhaps put in some remediation plans or some controls against to make sure that it, if it did materialise, we are ready for it. So we've got the priority level. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to put one in, I'm going to put another one in. Um, I'm going to move it because I've actually forgot to put it in so far. And I'm going to put this down as a single select. And this is actually just going to be risk category. So I'm actually going to move this back. Apologies, I missed this one. Now, here you can have different options depending on your organization and, and what's kind of relevant. But in this example, we're going to have a technology risk. And that's obviously going to apply now. Uh, we're going to have a financial risk. Oh, my spelling has gone a bit funny and we're going to have our HR risk or staff just as these are just examples um, I'm going to move this so move this left we can move this left and we're going to move it left again and as you can tell so far from the example this is a technology risk so we're getting there we are getting there all we need to do is add um, a couple more um, a couple more fields. One other one I'd recommend doing is putting in a risk uh, identification date, just so when you know when the team first became aware of it, or when you first wanted to kind of document it. Again, apologies for my shocking spelling. We're going to press create field. So let's say you know that was identified today. We're just going to whack that in there. Now we just need to add uh, a couple more columns. The next one is going to be people. So we want an owner. We want an owner. We want to assign an owner to the risk, someone who's going to pick it up, work on it, monitor it, um, maybe do those remediation plans, put in the controls, have the conversations with the stakeholders. So we need an owner. And I'm literally just going to put people and owner. And then from here, you can type in anyone who works within your team, or you can invite people onto this project and they can, or, or, or sorry, invite people to work on this risk register and they can come in and start adding detail or maybe, you know, they, they, they can pick it up or whatever. It's, it's, it's whoever owns the risk. Now, the final two, we're nearly there. The final two, I'm going to put in a text and I'm going to call this notes. Now, this is an area where the owner or anyone else can come in and they can enter notes into this risk register. Um, oh, that, I did that, shouldn't have done that one. It's this one, I want a little bit wider. So yeah, they can come in, they can enter their notes and just, you know, this is where they could talk about progress on the risk, any remediation plans that were put in place, any conversations they've had, etc. Now the final one is going to be date closed. So we call this date and date closed. Now, of course, if the risk is, you know, if, if it's been addressed, then this is where you'd simply put it in. And, you know, if this is, if this is empty, that the risk is still obviously ongoing. If there was a date in here, you then could put it into the section such as closed risks or outdated risks or, you know, risks no, we're no longer monitoring, etc. So that is, in essence, a risk register, and that's setting it, up, setting it up using the functionality of Asana. If I click board, then you will see um, this displayed as a board here. If you wanted to see it like that, the timeline's obviously not going to apply because we don't, we do got a couple of dates in there, but it's not really going to work. Um, and, and the same for calendar, really. So you, you are benefiting mostly off the list view, and that's what I'd recommend for a risk register anyway. Most risk registers are kept in Excel or a similar kind of tool where it's more spreadsheet based. So that's how I would do it. And I would literally start adding them down here, you know, and then once you've got done that, then 
you'll have a full list of risks and you can create this for different programs, different projects, different portfolios, different clients. It completely depends on your need. You could save this as a template and you could just literally copy, um, maybe delete the task and then just duplicate it. So uh, you could literally just go uh, duplicate. So delete this task and then once it's all saved and all done, you can duplicate it and then you can use it as many times as you want. So one, I know that this, this has perhaps taken you a little bit of time, but do it once, you can use it indefinitely and it's in the system forever. So I hope this video is useful. If it was, please do hit the like button. That tells me I should continue making videos like this and do consider subscribing to my channel. If you head over to my channel, I do have an Asana training um, playlist. So if you're new to the tool, want to learn more about it or, or get more out of it for you, yourself or your organization, then that's the place to go. So with all that said, I hope you have an excellent day.